Hi, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel, we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey, and you can find those listed in the description box below. So today we're going to be doing our, it's probably going to be bi-weekly right now, and we may factor into doing it weekly, but I'm going to be doing tarot polls for all of the different signs, just kind of going over the energies of the next couple weeks, what it is that you can expect. Um, we're going to be pulling a card for the energy supporting you over the next couple weeks, a card for the energy challenging you over the next couple weeks, and a card for general guidance. And we're just going to sort of see where we go from there. Depending on the length of this video, I may split it up into two parts for the two different halves of the Zodiac. Uh, it just depends if I need a break where I'm not the best with the editing right now. Uh, we may take a break and then have a second video for the second half of the Zodiac, uh, but it will be listed in the title, whichever signs this goes over. Uh, definitely check out your sun, your moon, your rising signs, uh, possibly your Venus signs, Whatever, whatever, whatever feels like it resonates for you. If you feel called to check out a certain sign, then go right ahead because there may be a message in there for you. Clear. Remember, these are collective readings, collective for specific to, of course, the collective that I channel for. And so take what resonates and leave the rest. It may not fully resonate for you. And if not, then as I said, check out your other signs. All right, let's start with Aries here. Clear. Let's get a few cards for Aries. Let's talk about what is the energy supporting Aries over the next couple weeks. What is the energy supporting my Aries? Is? My Aries is. <laughs> my Arians. There we go. We like that. Energy supporting my Arians. Oh, wow. Okay, so you guys got three cards that came out here. And, you know, I try to do these things with these specific questions, and sometimes spirit just throws cards at me and lets, lets us figure it out. So uh, we're going to see. But we have the sun here. So this is really, really beautiful energy. You are being, like, you are being supported in thriving right now. It's like, I feel like the energy supporting you or the energy uh, that you're being asked to call on for the next couple weeks, Aries, is this energy of optimism. It's this energy of positivity. It's also this childlike energy. And so really connecting with that aspect of your inner child, right? Really connecting with that, that joy and wonder for the world. I'm also feeling vitality, like you guys are going to have, and you guys being cardinal fire, right? You do have a lot of vitality, but it's all about how you manage that life force energy, right? You can burn yourselves out if you burn the candle at both ends for too long. Uh, but you are feeling vital. You are absolutely being asked to step into, if you are feeling this energy of positivity, of optimism, to really step into that. And I'm also feeling for some of you, uh, there's an energy of illumination too. It's like you're seeing and understanding something over the next couple weeks that's really going to assist you in, I definitely feel this inner child healing and this sense of freedom. It's going, there's an, a realization and an understanding that's going to offer you an incredible amount of freedom over the next couple weeks if you embrace it. And we have the nine of pentacles coming out. And so, uh, and yeah, the way that I'm feeling this is I feel like they gave us all three cards at once, right? We asked for three cards. So this would be uh, possibly the energy challenging you would be this nine of pentacles energy. But this isn't like <clears throat> when we say challenging, this is not necessarily a bad thing. This is just the energy of you really standing in your independence, right? The nine of pentacles is traditionally like the single and independent card, right? But it's somebody who's thriving on their own. So really stepping into your sense of autonomy within yourself. And this could be a challenge <clears throat> if possibly you're not used to that or say maybe some of you were used to, uh, were in a relationship and now you're not. And so you're remembering how to how to do everything as as a as a single and thriving individual as opposed to somebody who's partnered up or there's something remember we talked about this sense of freedom there's some area where you have been set free uh but it's an adjustment period adjusting to that freedom and you guys are a sign that loves freedom right aries energy is all about having the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it how you want to do it 
And so uh, there may be some of you who, who, I'm definitely feeling that for some, this energy of being in a relationship where maybe you didn't have that freedom the way you wanted it. And now you have it, but it's like for some of you, it's like you may not even know what to do with it because it's been so long since you've had that. And this doesn't necessarily just mean a relationship for some of you guys. It could be a job, like a job that's let you go or a job that you're being freed from. Anything that was holding you back in a sense that you're now being freed from. And it's giving you this opportunity to really stand in your sovereignty and your independence again and to really find yourself in a whole new way that perhaps you you had maybe lost a little bit of that. So it's like coming back to you, coming back home to you is the energy that's challenging you, but also inviting you to grow right now. And then with the guidance here, this third card, we have the Eight of Pentacles, right? So this is all about hard work. This is about continuing to put in the work and the effort. Whatever it is that you've been striving towards, whatever it is that you have been desiring, keep going, keep working at it. Don't give up because there is a lot of success there. It's just about you continuing to hone your skills, continuing to hone your craft, continuing to put that consistent, constructive effort in that absolutely is always rewarded, right? So just uh, really continuing to move forward. And um, yeah, for some of you guys where it is that maybe like you, you left a job situation or a job situation let you go or something like that or something something didn't work out or or maybe there was a project that you put a lot of effort into for a long time and now that's sort of like it's not relevant or resonant anymore and you're moving whatever the situation is where you're now in this energy again or really stepping into and embracing this energy uh there may be if 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 something is leaving there's something else that's better so it's about putting the effort and the skill into this new thing like maybe you decided that you'd been putting all your effort into a certain career path and it just wasn't working for you. And so you had that courage and that faith to let that go. But now you're realizing that what you want to do, it's going to involve learning some new skills and some new trades. There's going to be uh, gifts that maybe your gifts need to be developed a little more. Um, whatever it is, just know that you have everything within you in order to achieve that. And so just keep working at it. Just keep working at it. Uh, really allow that to be a focus. For you guys right now, it's really a focus of building yourselves up. Regardless of whether any of um, certain aspects of this reading resonated for you personally, you're, this is that energy of building yourself back up, being self-made. And that doesn't mean that we don't accept help and we don't allow opportunities to come in and we don't collaborate with people. But it means like your initiative, your desire, your will, right? And this is the one, a big part of the life path, the life mission for Aries energy to learn is, is creating your results, right? It's not something that was handed to you. It's something that you are building and creating. And so continue that building and creating process, whether this is building and creating a new, the new you, or whether there is something very specific that you are working towards building and creating. Yeah, so that's beautiful energy uh, for Aries. And with when we have this uh, Nine of Swords on the bottom of the deck here, or this Eight of Swords rather, don't allow yourself to fall into this energy, right? This is that old energy for some of you guys, right? Where you felt trapped in something and you felt stuck, but you, you figured out how to release yourself, how to let yourself go. You had that illumination, Right? You really set yourself free. And these sunflowers represent new beginnings too. All right. So there's a major new beginning from coming for you guys as you step into and move into this energy. And this is how you do that. Okay. All right. We're going to put these cards back in and then we're going to get ready for Taurus. Taurus for the month of September or the end of September, rather, the next couple weeks, which basically takes us to the end of September. Oh, time, our old friend. All right, Taurus, what's going on for my Taurians, my fellow Taurians? What is going on for the next couple weeks? Let's get three cards here. Energy supporting, energy challenging, general guidance. And this, my tapestry is just getting all funked up here. Energy supporting. Ooh, okay, Taurus, the energy supporting you this week. In this next couple weeks is the Eight of Cups. So this is walking away. All right, this is leaving something behind. All right, what is the energy challenging? King of Pentacles. Okay, interesting. 
And what is the general guidance for Taurus? Judgment with the Ace of Pentacles. Interesting. Okay. So Taurus is being asked to leave something behind. And yes, for some people, this could be a person, uh, possibly an earth sign. Right? But I feel like um, for a lot of people, it's this, when we look at the energy, and it's interesting because there is a bowl behind him, isn't there? I never noticed that before, right there. Um, but it doesn't, that's like the, a simplistic read, right? That it's a person, that it's an earth sign. Uh, for me, this feels more like, um, this is the energy of what Taurus wants, right? This is Taurus energy right here, the queen, the king of pentacles, right? Manifested in the physical realm, grounded stable, nurturing, productive, all right? And so this is Taurus's highest expression right here. So Taurus, the energy challenging you over the next couple weeks is the highest expression of your being and coming into that highest expression of your being. So that's really interesting, right? And for some of you, for some of us, right, what does it mean when we come into the highest expression of our being? It means we let go of the lower expressions, right? And so Taurus is being asked to make a move to do something to shift the energy. And with this Eight of Cups being the card that represents our, what's supporting us, it's this energy of moving on. It's this energy of letting go, of releasing. So what are you being asked to let go of? Where are you being asked to walk away, Taurus? Is this from a person or relationship? Is this from a certain version of a relationship with yourself? Is this from a job that you've stayed in because it's comfortable, but it's not necessarily feeding your soul and it's beginning to restrict your energy? You think it's helping you, but it's actually holding you back because it's keeping you in that energy. What is the biggest, the biggest um, challenge to Taurus energy? Complacency. That's the trap that Taurus falls into the easiest. So where in our lives have we become complacent? Right? Where is it where we've settled for something less than what it is that we deserve, for something less than what it is that we were meant for, right? This energy, as we move toward this 1010 portal, <clears throat> is all about bringing us more deeply into alignment with our souls, merging with our higher selves. It's about uh, finding that purpose, finding that thing that makes our soul sing and going after it. And so there's something, there's something that stands in the way of that, whether it's a belief system, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a certain way of viewing ourselves, whatever it is, wherever it is that we're playing it safe is what I feel for some people. Um, it's time to let that go, especially I'm definitely feeling it when it comes to finances for many, like playing it safe in the physical realm, in the material world. Because Taurus likes security. Taurus likes, okay, like this, everything's lined up just like this. I know I have all the things that I need, right? Taurus doesn't just want the things that they need. And maybe I'm speaking, and trust me, being the Taurus son myself, uh, I, can, I can relate to this. Taurus wants the extra, right? Like, I don't just want to know I'm taken care of from month to month. I want to know there's a surplus. I want to know there's a safety net, right? I want that cushion, Right, Taurus is, so like, where is it that you are, uh, for many, right, sacrificing, and for others too, sacrificing your peace in order for, in order to maintain this, this semblance of security. So there's a judgment call, there's an awakening, there's, this is, this is the, um, the guidance, is this call to action, take the action, and this is what results from that, it's a brand new cycle. Right? A brand new cycle in prosperity, a brand new cycle of physical manifestation, physical things coming through in your reality. Right, Taurus is the master manifester. There is no sign better at manifesting, right? Because Taurus is fixed earth. Taurus is grounded in the material realm. Taurus, like we said, is that king, this queen of pentacles. All right. But in order to manifest to our greatest ability, to bring in our greatest abundance, we have to be willing to take risks, 
right? We have to be willing to step out of the comfort zone. So that's what Taurus is being asked to do this month is, or the, for the rest of this month, whatever, is step out of the comfort zone because that's where this is waiting, right? That's where this is waiting. And it may not manifest all at once. It may manifest in bits and pieces, but the initiation of this new cycle of leveling up when it comes to your, your manifested reality. And when it comes to a reality that's manifested, that is congruent with your ideals, with your passions, that really um, makes you, it elevates you, right, to the next level. It takes you to the next level. But you have to be willing to do what needs to be done in order to get there. You have to be willing to take a little bit of a risk. You have to be willing to walk away from the known and step into the unknown, right? For some of you guys, it may be like a new job offer but you're afraid to leave the old one. There's, it's for a lot of people, this has to do with that, right? And like I said, it can have to do with a lot of things, but I'm definitely feeling that energy for some. There's some opportunity that wants to present itself. And so for some, the opportunity is going to require you to walk away. And for others of you, walking away is what brings this opportunity in. It's going to be different for different people. Interesting. And what do we have on the bottom of the deck? Strength. Right? Mastery of the mind, mastery of the beast inside, mastery of the lower, the, the ego, right? Courage. Call upon, draw upon that courage right now. For some people too, I'm also feeling this, this represents Leo energy. I'm feeling like uh, for people who may be offered an opportunity or something, it may have to do with the Leo. Or you're being, we're being asked to call upon our inner Leo. Remember, we all... We all have all signs within our charts somewhere. Even if we don't have planets in the signs, they rule one of our houses, right? We are made up of all the signs. All of the signs of the zodiac make up the totality of the human psyche and the human experience, right? So we possess the qualities of all of these. We just have to tap into them. So for many, it's tap into your inner Leo. The Leo is confident, right? In its highest expression. Leo energy is confident. It is charismatic, right? It is optimistic. And yeah, so tap into that. Know that you have the strength within you to, to make this leap, to take this risk, right? Taurus likes calculated risk, but uh, for sometimes we can't do all the calculations, right? We, we have to leave that up to spirit. All right, Taurus, I hope that you enjoyed this um, little mini reading here. Okay, now we're getting into Gemini. Clear. Gemini, let's get a card for the energies that are supporting Gemini over the next couple weeks. What energies are supporting Gemini over the next couple weeks? Energies that are supporting my beautiful Geminis. My beautiful, beautiful Geminis. Okay. All right, we got <clears throat> the Nine of Pentacles with the Ace of Swords. So this is that energy of independence, and the Ace of Swords did come out inverted. So I'm going to decide whether I want to take that or leave that, uh, because it's all, it's all about intuition here. So this is the energy that's supporting Gemini this month, which is this energy of independence. It's this energy of really standing on their own two feet. And where the Ace of Swords was like this, part of me is feeling that it's a lack of communication that's going to support you this month. Which is interesting for Gemini, right? Because you guys are a sign that is all about the mind. You are a sign that likes to communicate. Ah, uh, but there may be something that is better left unsaid this month, which is interesting. It's like, um, it's interesting because sometimes when they talk, when we talk about balancing our throat chakra, right? There are two ways that we can do this, or there are lots of ways that we can do this. But uh, two of the big ways that we can do this is by singing and expressing or by being silent. 
And especially as we're moving into Mercury retrograde at the end of this month, uh, there may be times when it's best to stay silent. When it's best to, this is kind of like these two cards together um, right now almost remind me of the hermit energy a little bit. Right? Kind of pulling back the energy. That internal process. Right? And that's what this feels like too. This is, there's a, I have a friend and I really like the way she reads reverse cards. She reads them as introverted energy versus extroverted energy. And I'm feeling that right now. So I'm feeling like there's some sort of, in, in because remember, this is a new cycle. This is a realization. This is an understanding as well as communication, right? So as like an internal realization that's starting to build for Gemini. And this internal realization and understanding, this illumination is really helping you to gain this, this independent energy. To really feel confident and good standing on your two feet. It's like, Gemini, you're really coming into this energy where you're able to create for yourself, right? This is the energy of someone who's self-made. This is the energy for, of someone who's very abundant in their own right. So you may be in an energy of creating that in your life. And I'm feeling for some of you guys too, it's like the guy, some of the guidance that's coming through, this is interesting, is like as you're in this process of creating your new reality, of really learning how it feels to be self-sufficient and on your own 100%. And I don't mean this in a bad way, right? I don't mean this like you're all alone, right? The whole world's again, not that kind of an energy, but like this energy of like really knowing that you have the power to create your reality. And you have the power to support yourself and be independent and be established on your own, in your own right. There may be things that you're doing that you may not want to talk to everyone about right away. You might not want to share your ideas and your inspirations and like your next steps with everybody. You may want to play some of that stuff close to your chest. Which is interesting because they talk a lot about this, uh, especially in like spell work and stuff. But sometimes with manifesting, this idea of the more people you let in about what you're doing, the more energies you bring into the equation and the more those energies can possibly influence the outcome. Right. And so uh, we don't necessarily need to tell everybody what we're doing all the time. Right. We can move in swiftness and silence and we can share what we're ready to share with the world when we're ready to share it. Right. It's like, and this isn't necessarily always true, but the energy that I'm that I'm picking up on right now or that's being called to my attention is that energy. It's like real G's move in silence, right? It's like this energy of the people who are really making the moves out there, they don't, they don't, they're not constantly on social media. They're not constantly all over the place telling people everything that they're trying to do, everything that they're like every little thing, you know, they're not the ones who post um you know, like like pictures of big billfolds and have that that whole energy, right? Uh, they do, they do things quietly. Yeah, so that's really interesting that that energy is coming out. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I'm also just feeling like communication right now for Gemini's. Uh, where you are a sign that's ruled by Mercury and Mercury is going into retrograde. Uh, this this also feels a bit like a challenger card too. Like uh, communication may be challenging for you guys. And so it's like perfecting the art of not speaking. Not everything needs to be spoken. And we can speak volumes more with our actions than we can with our words. Yeah. Let's get any more child energies uh, for what's challenging Gemini this month. Yeah, we have the Five of Swords here. All right. So there may be some people in your reality, Gemini, and this may be why it's best to kind of keep quiet and just uh, keep your moves, keep your goals and your dreams. Like share them with the trusted people in your circle who are going to motivate you to, to continue to be better, to continue to strive forward. Right? Right? But uh, maybe not, not 
uh, broadcasting everything to everyone right now because there are some people, there's a little bit of an energy of jealousy uh, maybe for some people. But more than anything, but that's going to be only for some. What I'm feeling for this card more than anything else is the energy of surrender. That's what this card means to me above all else is surrender. So an energy that is challenging Gemini and also what I feel uh, as part of the guidance for Gemini right now is to surrender. Where is it that you need to surrender and let go? Right? Where is it that you've been fighting and fighting and fighting for something and it's just not coming through? It's not transpiring the way that you want it to because it wasn't meant to be. So can you let go? Can you walk away? Can you choose your battles? Can you also avoid the drama? Can you walk away from the drama? Right? We don't even realize sometimes how much drama we create for ourselves, right? We're creating our reality constantly. This is this energy as you're stepping into this creator of your reality. It's looking at that in all aspects. If there is chaos, if there is drama, why is why are you creating that? Right? This is what we have to ask ourselves. This is what we have to look at. Right? So it's letting go of that, letting go of that, allowing other people to have their thoughts and opinions and not worrying about it. What other people think of me is none of my business, right? Yeah, so surrendering to whatever is going on in your life right now, Gemini, where it is that you have to release, that you're being asked to release control of a situation, of an outcome, where you're being asked to just allow yourself to go with the flow. Where have you been fighting the flow? Where have you found resistance within yourself? And where can you now release that resistance? All right, one more card for general guidance. The moon. Ooh, yeah. So uh, looking into that, the, that shadow, looking into the unconscious. There's a lot of aspects of your consciousness right now with this, with this, um, Ace of Swords reversed with all of this energy, right? This conflict, this drama could be simply within your own mind. Learning to overcome the conflict, the drama, and the chaos within your own mind, right? Whatever it is, dive deep. Your guidance is to dive deep over these next couple weeks to really examine, the, allow yourself to, uh, to get to know the subconscious better. Right, Mercury retrograde is a great time for that because we're thinking from a different, we're seeing from a different perspective. All right, what's been in the unconscious is coming into consciousness in order to be examined, in order to be understood. Right? This is the energy of finding out and understanding where you are your own worst enemy because we all are. And sometimes we project that, we externalize that to other people. But really, we ultimately are our own worst enemy. So where is it until we become our best friend, right? But first we have to understand where it is that we are still limiting ourselves, where it is that we are still holding ourselves back, where it is that we are still at war within ourselves, right? Which wolf are you feeding? Are you feeding love or are you feeding fear? Yeah. And with this lobster here, for some reason, the lobster right now is making me think of cancer energy. Lobster crab. It's a crustacean or shellfish or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, so the intuition, really utilizing and tapping into your intuition is going to be a huge guide for you right now. Allowing that intuition to guide you down the path. It's like some people, it's like spirit's been trying to guide you down a path. And you're you're there. But you're standing at the, at the, you're just standing on the path, questioning whether or not it's your path, right? And this is where the twins come in, the dualistic energies, right? One twin understands that this is the path and the other twins like, ah, yeah, but is it really? But are we making a mistake? But what about this? You know, um, trust your path. Walk your path. Walk your path with spirit. Because spirit's guiding you. And it's like some of you guys, it's like you were on the path, but you, you're, you're kind of, there's, there's an aspect of 
there's an aspect that's wobbly right now. Some of you guys kind of turned around and you were like surveying a different path. So Spirit's bringing you back. And bringing you back. It's like if you're continually being rerouted in some area of your life, that's where the surrender comes in. You're being rerouted, rerouted to your divine path. So stop trying to walk a path that's not yours. Right? That's the other message as far as the paths go. And definitely, if you are walking a path that somebody else created for you, don't walk, that's walking somebody else's path, right? We're here to walk our own. So don't let somebody else tell you what that path is that you're supposed to walk. All right, let your own heart tell you. Let your own intuition guide you. All right, that is the guidance for Gemini for the next two weeks. Now we're going to move on here. Let's clear the deck. Clear. All right, let's get some guidance now for Cancer. Cancer, for the next few weeks, let's get some guidance for Cancer. What can we expect? What is the guidance for our Cancerians? What is the energy supporting Cancer over the next couple weeks? Energy supporting Cancer over the next couple weeks. Energy supporting the cancer. Oh, okay. All right. So it looks like we got all three coming out again, which has been happening sometimes. It's, this is a three card poll. All right. So we're going to look at these. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if this was a three card poll. We're just going to feel our way through this and see. Uh, how we're feeling. So we're going to go with this. We're going to start with the nine of wands here or the 10 of wands rather putting the burdens down. So this is, this is, um, carrying a load that's too heavy. And I feel for you guys, right? Being super empathic, being very emotional, very, uh, emotionally connected, very nurturing for some of you guys, a lot of these burdens that you've been carrying haven't even been your own. So the energy supporting you is the putting down, is putting the burdens down, letting them go. It's like, I feel like this, over these next two weeks, you're re really being guided to let go of everything that's not yours. Let go of everything you're carrying that doesn't belong to you. And this isn't just like in your physical manifested reality. This is also energetically speaking. Letting go, let that shit go, whatever is not yours. And even if it is yours, it doesn't have to be, right? It it's only belongs to us as long as we claim ownership of it. And we don't have to claim ownership of, of what we don't want to carry anymore, right? Our trauma, our baggage, that's only ours as long as we continue to own it. So uh, put down, put down what, what, release what isn't serving you. There's, this is a huge theme that's going through a lot of the readings right now. Release that which isn't serving you. You have the energy challenging you being the Six of Pentacles. And so either way, regardless of which of these cards came out first, because like I said, when they all fall out like that, it's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, the energy challenging you knew is balance. It's learning balance. It's understanding and seeing where energy is not fair and balanced, where energy is not being reciprocated. So this is, this is the energy of learning that balance of give and take, of giving and receiving, and really understanding who is, where is your energy most appreciated, right? Where is your energy the most constructive and where are you literally just wasting your time on people in situations that are not appreciating what it is that you are giving, right? Where are you wasting your energy? Imagine how much lighter that bag on your back would be if you weren't carrying if you weren't carrying stuff for like 10 other people. Right? Imagine how much more you could fit in that backpack that was yours, that helped you, that was help that was beneficial for you. Right? Yeah. So putting that down, understanding and really getting getting this 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 uh, acceptance around around where it is that others are perhaps taking advantage. And you could flip-flop this, right? Uh, for some cancers, maybe uh, you're noticing where you tend to do this. 
but for a lot of you guys i'm feeling and just knowing your energy right that that it, it really has to do with other people sort of taking advantage of your generosity of that beautiful nurturing nature that you have or it's also uh for some of you guys it's like you being in relationships and friendships and whatever ships right where you're you're getting crumbs right that's what i'm seeing i'm seeing this these crumbs right here and i'm also seeing the scales which is fairness which is justice right balance libra energy we are moving into libra energy so this is going to be a huge uh lesson that we're all learning right but you guys are really feeling it right now just because of your propensity to to be givers anyway so it's like for some of you guys too it's like somebody is giving you something but it's if you know it's not what you deserve or what you're worthy of whether this is a relationship where somebody's giving you just enough to keep you around but not what not what you really deserve not what you really need whether this is a job where they're paying you just enough money to get by just what they know you'll accept right anywhere where there's a situation that's unfair and unbalanced and you're just not receiving you know you're not receiving what you deserve to be receiving and when i say what you deserve to be receiving i mean like your worth your worth is not being reflected in a situation and you're shouldering a lot of the extra burden right you're carrying a lot of the extra weight for other people and so your guidance this month is to step into this king of swords energy right this is air energy so this is aquarius gemini libra energy uh, so some of you guys could also be dealing with an air sign but it is that energy that libra energy that i'm really feeling of fairness and balance and um but it's you speaking up right the king of swords he is very clear he is very concise he does not mince words he can be a bit blunt sometimes because he's really not too concerned with how people feel he's concerned with the truth and so this is speaking your truth this is standing up for yourself this is really cutting away this is that energy of putting down those burdens cutting out what doesn't serve saying the things that need to be said and you can still say them with love and compassion but you need to stand up for yourself you need to you need to demand in a kind and loving way right remember that's where we draw upon the libra energy which is really good at compromise the libra energy is really good at crafting words in a certain way at saying things in a way that that is charming to people and doesn't put them on the offensive you don't necessarily want to put people on the offensive but you want to and i don't want to say you want to be defensive though because that's not but you you don't want necessarily need to say things in a way that's going to put people on the offensive but you need to speak your truth you need to stand up for what you're worth you need to stand up for what you believe in you need to give other people their shit back and let them carry it for themselves all right so that energy coming through very powerfully for you guys and then on the bottom of the deck here we have the four of swords so this is rest this is rejuvenation this is healing right so that's that's extra guidance for you guys right there is uh you're like i feel like some of you guys are just burned out it's like your cup is is running pretty dry right now and you need to this is you taking that time that you need to fill your cup as well carving out using the sword to carve out the time you need for yourself to care for yourself and stop worrying so much about other people right especially other people that won't do the same for you that you do for them all right so now we are going to move on to clear leo all my leos in the house what is the energy for my beautiful lions and lionesses as we move toward the end of september here so guidance for the next couple weeks for leo what is the energy supporting my beautiful leos over the next couple weeks energy supporting got the page of swords all right so the energy supporting you is um this energy of learning this energy of curiosity i feel you guys being very curious this month getting more information that coming through too uh it's going to be very helpful for you to get more information 
whatever it is that you're considering right now, whatever it is that's going on in your life, uh, you want to learn more about it. Yeah, let's get out. Uh, what is the energy challenging? Okay, we got the Hermit and Strength coming out. Two major arcana for challenging. And energy supporting. Or guidance, general guidance. Interesting. Okay. So, Leo, you guys have an interesting, uh, interesting cards out here. I feel like, too... Something that's going on here for some Leos is you may be learning something this month or over these next couple weeks. You may be learning something. You may be coming into some information. And when you come into this information, when you, you gain this understanding, uh, whatever it is for some of you guys, it's a message coming through. You're going to need to call upon your, this is your card, right? And this is the Virgo card. Right, and we are finishing out Virgo season over this next week and a half. So you're really going to have to call upon your inner strength and really take some time to digest. Take some time to go within. Take some time to pull your energy back. You're going to, this is, so Leo energy, uh, you guys are often, and remember, no energy is pure in its form. We have a lot of different energies in our charts, right? But pure Leo energy is extroverted so right now the challenge is to allow yourself to become more introverted because that's how you're going to recharge over the next couple weeks leo and that's how you're going to figure out and understand the things that you need to figure out and understand it's like for some of you guys there is information coming through that you're going to need to digest and then figure out what to what your next move is all right for others of you, it's just there's a lot of new information coming in. You're curious. You're learning about things. For some of you guys, there may be a lot of downloads and a lot of information coming in uh, that you need to integrate. And so in order to integrate it, you need to go within. You need to th remember we're also moving toward Mercury retrograde. Mercury is in shadow right now. So it's this balancing of the mental body. Right? So in order for all of that integration, in order for this your mental body to be able to be balanced, in order for you to digest everything, and possibly for some of you guys make a decision about how to move forward, you, you're going to have to pull back your energy a little bit and go within. Yeah. And for some of you guys, like this information, whatever this, this uh, whatever it is that you're learning over the next couple weeks, it may throw you for a loop a little bit. But it, it's probably going to be very illuminating, whatever it is. And it's ultimately for the best. And then your guidance, we had the Four of Cups. And I do believe it came out inverted with the Emperor. All right. So this is really stepping into your sovereignty. This is really stepping into your, your masculine. Stepping into your masculine energy which is cool, it is clear, it is concise, it knows where it wants to go, it knows what it needs to do, and it does what it needs to do to get there, right? Really being assertive, being decisive. That's what, yeah, with this Four of Cups uh, inverted, I'm feeling that energy of decisiveness. Your guidance is to go within, right? To call upon your inner strength, to call upon your inner clarity, to really go within, to digest everything, and then from that place, utilize your internal guidance in order to figure out what your what the move is. And when you know what the move is, make the move. That's the energy here. Make the move. Yeah, you may. Some of you guys may need to go inside internally. Uh, because there's some some opportunity being offered to you, and you're trying to figure out um, whether it's it's a, it's helpful or not, right? Things may not be 100% what they seem, and so you need to go within to determine and use your own discernment. Even people who are getting lots of downloads and messages, using your discernment in how you interpret those, how you internalize those, and what it is that you believe in, what it is, what actions that you may take as a result. And for, for all of you guys, too, um, some of this energy here 
It's the energy of uh, moving out of complacency and moving out of this energy of, uh, it's like you're being asked to move into an energy of gratitude too. Move out of, moving out of complacency and into an energy of gratitude. Into an energy of appreciation for the things that you have. And anywhere where you find yourself where life is kind of lackluster and you guys being such an expressive sign, you do not appreciate a lackluster life. Uh, anywhere where you're feeling that lack of luster, you're being asked to, you're being guided to take the initiative to shift that energy, right? If you're, it, move out of that energy of being discontent, move out of that energy of boredom. Uh, remember this emperor, this represents Aries energy. This is fire energy, right? A lot of that fire coming through, Leo. A lot of that fire for you. So it's like really um, knowing that you have within you the courage and the strength, right? You're fucking Leo. You are a lion. Let yourself roar. You have the courage, the strength, the discernment, and the determination to do whatever it is that you need to do, to handle whatever situation it is that comes up. So don't let yourself forget that. Okay? Don't let yourself forget that. And know that if something in your reality is not to your liking, you can shift that by shifting your energy. Right? By making some making a move. But go within first to figure out what that move is and make sure that that move really resonates with you. And there may be some teamwork and collaboration uh, in your future this over this next couple weeks as well. Yep. Yeah. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this, Leo. I hope that you have a beautiful next couple weeks. And remember, you guys, if you do feel called, I do personal readings. I also do energy healings and all kinds of other uh, beautiful things. So check that all out in the description box below. Clear. Email me if you want to set something up. All right. Okay. Now that we have our beautiful Leos out of the way. We're going to do Virgo. Let's get some guidance for Virgo. Virgos. All my beautiful Virgos in the house. For the next couple weeks, what are my Virgos? What is the energy that is supporting my Virgos? As we move through the tail end of your season into Libra season. Ooh, Virgo. Damn. First card out is the tower. This is the energy supporting you this month. So divine intervention, baby. That's what's going on for you. Something is shifting. There's some realization for some of you guys, some event, something that happens that really wakes you up. All right? Wakes you up. And I feel you guys really being moved toward the path, toward the path that's meant for you, right? But in, but in order for creation to happen, there must first be destruction. All right? Energy challenging. We have the Five of Swords. All right. And general guidance for Virgo. Six of Wands. Okay. See? See? So like we said, there is some strife. There is some struggle. But that makes way for triumph. Okay? Yeah. There is a big shakeup for Virgo. Whether this is, like we said, something externally that's happening or some internal realization that you have. But whatever it is, whether it's external or internal, it's moving you closer, like we said, to your destined and divine path, toward victory. Even if you don't see it, even if this thing comes out of left field and it feels like it's setting you completely off course, it's actually uh, directing your course. It's moving you in a more direct route towards what it is that you want and what's truly meant for you. So for some of you guys with this five of swords, to me, oftentimes this represents surrender right? Where are you willing to surrender? This is very similar to, I, I forget which sign it was that we just did a reading that was very similar to this as far as Gemini, I think it was. The need to surrender, the need to let go, right? It's like you've been trying so hard. You've been so persistent trying to achieve a goal, trying to make something work, trying to sort of like control a situation, right? But there is no controlling it. And that's what the tower is here to tell you. The tower comes in and it's a clean slate, right? It wipes everything clean. Whatever it is that you were trying to hold on to, the tower comes in and removes it, either with an external event or through some realization and understanding that you simply cannot deny. 
And then your challenge is to surrender. It's to let go. It's to release the chaos and the drama. It may feel for some of you guys like somebody else won. Is what I'm getting. Like this tower comes in. And you, you're being freed. You're being released. This is actually really good for you. But the ego comes up and the pride comes up and says, well, I feel like this person won. Why do they get what they want and now I don't? Or um, you, or if even if it's not like you feel like somebody else won, it feels like you lost. Right? Release that pride. Release that ego. You are winning whether you see it or not. Right? Sometimes a loss is a win. And with this six of wands, victory, success, recognition, achievement, this, like, that's it, right? <laughs> I just thought in my head, winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right? Like, this is, it's all paving its way for your success, right? That's where we call upon that energy of it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. Whether you see it or not. So the, the um, guidance from spirit too is you are a winner. Know it. Own it. Don't get, don't get stuck in this energy, of, this victim energy. Don't get stuck in this energy of um, resistance, this pride, this ego energy. Release it. Let it go. It's done. It wasn't for you. Something better is meant for you. Or like... Um, just something good is going to come from this. This is facilitating something much better for you. So just know, embrace this energy of triumph, of victory. Look at it as a success. Even if there's something that you're feeling like you failed at, and I know Virgo energy, I say we because I have a Virgo moon and strong Virgo energy in my chart, right? We tend to be perfectionists. We want to do everything perfectly. We want it all done right. We want to dot our I's and cross our T's. Uh Failure is sometimes is also success. There is no such thing as failure. All right. So, oh, I forget. My friend Tommy had a really great acronym that he came up with for the word fail. Uh, it's in one of the video, one of the uh, the other videos in the comments. I wish I could remember what he said about it, um, but it was really great <clears throat> because we're 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 just gaining wisdom. We're gaining lessons. Yeah, so don't get into that energy. <clears throat> Just um, stay in this energy. Keep your head held high. Know that you are victorious, right? And that's the energy that, br that, um, that brings victory. And I'm noticing this guy watching him driving, riding by on this horse right now. And I'm feeling like there is somebody watching you. And watching your reaction to situations, watching the way that you handle yourself. And for some people, this person is somebody that looks up to you. It's like you're a role model for them. So the way that you gracefully accept whatever the situation is and move on and rebound from it, the way that you're able to surrender and let go and move forward, your reaction is going to, it's going to be very important for them to watch and see. Right? Whether this is just somebody that looks up to you, whether this is a child, whether I don't, a partner, I don't know what this is. Uh, for others of you, somebody is noticing and paying attention to you, and they're going to come through and, and um, offer you something better than what it is that you left behind. Or it's going to attract someone or something into your life. The way that you handle this situation, you keeping your head held high, you being graceful, right? You are surrendering and letting go and releasing that resistance and moving forward triumphantly. Like somebody's going to notice that and there's going to be uh, something, something really positive that comes of that. Yeah. And for some of you guys, this isn't going to be that much of a struggle. Something comes in, something shifts, you surrender, you release it, and you, you step into this energy. Right. Your loss is actually a win. And then on the bottom of the car, on the deck we have, yeah, the bottom of the deck, we have the death card, right? Transformation, the ending of something, the ending that creates the beginning, okay? Letting something go. 
It's I'm really feeling for some of you guys letting something die that wants to die. All right. This is the energy of don't beat a dead horse. Right. Look how much better he looks when he's when he's riding a live one. All right. Notice these two, the white horse here. Right. So for some of you guys, too, this is the energy of learning how to rescue yourself. Those of you who may have been waiting for a rescue in some way, shape or form, learning how to rescue yourself. And then we have the Hierophant under that, which is a major spiritual lesson, right? Leveling up. So there's a huge level up here. If you are, if you are willing to recognize it. And then the Three of Pentacles, right? Which is that collaboration, that teamwork. That person maybe that's noticing you. Right? Even if something didn't work out, it paved the way for something better. But it's time to it's time to release whatever is wanting to be removed. All right. That's powerful energy for Virgo for this month. Damn, you guys. All right. If you want any personal assistance, please reach out to me. All my info is in the description box below. I feel like I want to shuffle those up a little better there. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We've got Libra now. Clear. Let's get some energy for my beautiful Librans for the next three weeks or two weeks. Ah, uh, as we wrap up Virgo season and we begin your season, Libra, what is going on? Let's get the card for what is supporting my Libras over the next couple weeks. What energy is supporting my Libras over the next couple weeks? What energy is supporting my Libras? All right, we got the Hierophant. As the first card out, this is a major uh, spiritual up leveling. All right, this is also um, commitment. Sometimes this is a promotion. I feel like some of you guys may be getting promoted in some way, shape, or form. Uh, let's get some more energy here. Energy challenging. Six of Cups and general guidance for Libra. Queen of Wands, interesting, with the chariot on the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> so the energy supporting you is, uh, is this energy of, it feels like stability, it feels like commitment. Uh, like I said, it feels like a promotion for some of you guys. And this may not necessarily mean like at work or something like that. It could be like a spiritual promotion. To me, the Hierophant is wisdom. It's also like um, up-leveling. Right, the next level of our spiritual journey. If our life were a video game, you'd be like uh, moving on to the next level. All right, but some of the energy that's holding you back or challenging you is this this six of cups energy. So this is the energy of nostalgia. I'm really feeling being stuck in the past. It's like you're getting this beautiful, great opportunity to move forward. For some of you guys, this can be marriage and commitment. So uh, for some of you guys, maybe you're you're getting married or somebody's proposed to you. Or like we said, somebody proposed an, uh, it could be like a, a business promotion, something like that. For some of you guys, I'm almost feeling like maybe you might have to move in order to accept whatever this, this, new, um, this new position is. It's like status, right? Uh, it, it's going to involve some changes. And it's like you're really kind of, you're stuck in the past. There's something that you're not wanting to let go of from the past. That uh, this next level is going to ask you, wherever it is that you're moving up to and what energy you're moving into is going to ask you to let go of this past energy. And so for some of you guys where this is just like plain and simple, a spiritual upgrade, it's like this new version of you is going to ask you to release the old, right? And you're going to have to let go of some of the stuff from the past that you've been clinging on to, whether this is people from the past. I feel for some of you guys, it's like as your vibration is changing, the people in your reality are shifting and changing too, and you're having a really hard time with that. You're struggling with that because you don't want to let them go, right? Because you love them, right? We never want to let go of the people that we love. I won't say never. Sometimes we realize that holding on to them is harder than releasing them. Or there's just some aspect of you that you're really, um, you're really hesitant to leave behind some aspect of your old identity, 
But this is the energy. This is your guidance, the Queen of Wands, right? So this is magnetism. This is fire energy. She holds the sunflower, right? The new beginnings. So you're being asked to step confidently into a new beginning, into another phase, another expression of you, right? An expression of you that maybe you haven't seen before. Maybe you've never seen yourself as this confident, magnetic person, right? You are, your energy, as your energy is upgrading, you are becoming more magnetic. People are noticing you even more, right? People are drawn to you, but people are also uh, sort of repelled by you or uh, fall away from you if they're not, if they're not of, of a like frequency like we were talking about. And so it's like the shifting and changes. It's like the changes and how to navigate those changes, how to navigate the internal and external changes is a little bit uh, scary for you right now. Yeah. But there, is, there are so, such beautiful things waiting for you. There is such powerful energy coming in for you, right? Your life is wanting to take off. You are about to take off. And so it's like just trusting that, trusting that, knowing that you can still carry the love and the wisdom from all the experiences that you've had, from all the relationships that you've had, but you don't necessarily have to uh, carry them in, like you don't have to uh, hold on to the sadness. You don't have to, I think this is part of the spiritual lesson too. And so this is like the final stages of that is like you really learning that you don't have to hold on to the grief and the sadness and the guilt and all of these different things in order to, like, you're not, you don't, just in general, like, you don't have to do that. For some of you guys, it may even be like somebody that you lost, somebody that passed, that transitioned, right? And uh, you have a hard time allowing yourself to be happy and allowing yourself to move forward because you feel like it's, it's a uh, betrayal of them. And this for people who uh, resonated with the marriage and commitment too, this could be very re relevant, right? Like moving on, being happy with somebody else, but feeling guilty because of somebody that you loved that possibly passed away, transitioned, or that things just didn't work out with. But it's like, you deserve that happiness, right? We can honor a relationship that we've had with someone without having to hold on to all of the, the sadness and the guilt. We can practice forgiveness of ourselves and others. Yeah, there's definitely an energy for a lot of you guys of needing to forgive someone or something. And for some of you guys, it may be yourselves. Yeah. But it's like there's a whole new level of your evolution that's waiting for you. So don't let the past hold you back. Don't let the past hold you hostage. Don't spend, don't, don't, don't throw away what is for what might have been or what could have been. Right? Fully embrace what's here right now. Yeah. And keep moving forward. All right. So that is your reading for the next couple weeks. My beautiful Librans. I hope that you enjoyed it. Clear. And we are going to take a little break right now. And uh, what that means is that those of you whose signs haven't come up yet, I'm going to be putting out another video right after this one that will... Uh, give you guys your your forecast for the next couple weeks or your your card pulls for the next couple weeks. And so we will have my beautiful Scorpios through Pisces coming up next. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed these. If you guys did, uh, this has actually been really fun for me and this is something that I would like to continue doing uh, as sort of a new a new kind of I don't know what you want to call it. Just a new kind of video uh, that I put out here for you guys. So let me know. Drop a comment, comment down below. Let me know how this resonated. Let me know if you enjoyed it and you want to see more videos like this. And as I said, if you haven't found your sign yet, 
check out the next video that'll be coming up after I take a little break here. And um, also check out check out your sun, check out your moon, check out your rising. Any signs where you have uh, strong energies or you feel a strong pull towards, uh, check those out because there could be messages in there for you. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. I also have links to donate if you feel so moved to donate to my channel. And as I think I have mentioned in a couple of the readings, my email is down below with a list of the different services that I offer. And so if you would like any personal assistance at this time, please reach out to me. So much love to you.